Anyway, let's get into some calls here. We are going to be talking to Mr. Enigma. Uh, he, him, calling in from New York and claiming that he has proof of God. Mr. Enigma. Yeah, I got. Hi, thanks there. for waiting. Hi. So, um, yeah, I've got proof of God. Okay, I, let's hear I it. Say it's proof. So it's proof. It, w- it wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's so much proof of, as it is evidence. Okay. You know, I think it's but a pretty good. It's. I think it's got a lot of subtext to it. Um, hit me. Let's hear it. I'm gonna hit you with two anagrams, okay? Two anagrams. Okay. Why? But first, I'm gonna ask you a question. Why is dog God spelled backwards? Oh no, Why? I don't know. I'm going to answer the age. I've discovered the age old mystery as to why God is dog spelled backwards or frontwards or however you want to say it. Um, because God ain't nothing but man's best friend. Oh, a strong, strong disagree here. That's my best friend sitting right there. I don't know if people who are just listening later on the pod, but I got my little, my little furry friend right behind me there. Um, she's definitely. <laughs> Really been there a lot more times than God has ever been. I can talk to her. She'll make expressions back to me. I can hear her when she sneezes or scratches at something. Uh, evidentially, she is a lot more uh, here, and the proof is very simple. She's right there. So I don't. I don't know. I. What's your next? What's your next best proof? I, I got another one. I got another one. But can I? Can I make a reply to that comment though? Sure. Your last comment. But don't you think, like, if God were, like, if there was, like, if everyone just had, like, a mini Jesus following them around, or, like, a mini God following them around, granting whatever wishes they wanted, like, then God would become our slave and our prisoner, and he wouldn't be free to be himself around us and with us, you know, and it'd basically be the situation of Genie and Aladdin, you know? Like, poof, what do you need? Poof, what do you need? Poof, what do you need? That kind of sounds like a like a him problem and not a me problem. Uh, he could just create a thing where he shows up once a year in a way that would be evidence for the entire human right. race. And he doesn't follow me around every single day or grant any wishes, so mm-hmm. to say. So mm-hmm. there's, mm-hmm. I think that this yeah. this is a, a never ending conversation. We can talk about what would what would be good con- good Here's convincing, neck, what evidence or not. Evidence but I think that ultimately, Here. what we're saying right now is that we need something that is going to be more concrete than just like a feeling or just this idea. But so uh, I would like My to hear your proof. Here. What has convinced? What has here's, convinced you? Here is I'm, very convinced. Yeah, here's. Hang on. I'm, First I'm, of all, there is a bit. Of, there is a delay when we're talking, obviously. We're talking like intercontinentally. Um, so I do want to hear from you uh, because this is a show where we want to hear about what you believe and why you believe. So we have talked lots about why we don't believe. So please tell me what is your reason for your belief. My belief is that I've had a lot of spiritual experiences. I've had a lot, and by spiritual, I mean, um, you know, that which is of another world, other that which is otherworldly, that which I can't explain with my five, four or five cardinal senses. Um, it can it cannot that, be which explained. I don't believe, that which, right? Yeah, it can't be explained by the cog by my mind. It can't be explained by my conscious awareness. It can't be explained away by uh, my sense of taste or touch or smell or hearing or sight. How, how did you go about deciphering whether this was something that was completely outside of your senses? Because I, I, I've heard a lot of people's ex- spiritual experiences and from most of my understanding about it is that it is, is maybe an indescribable kind of feeling that they've had, but ultimately there's nothing substantial outside of it that could be like that is inex- inexplainable outside of our five senses, whether it's an imagery or a feeling or something about that. So can you please kind of go into more detail about that? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, just to illustrate before I get into it, I will say um, to kind of uh, 
bring up a scripture where uh, to quote a verse in the in the Christian Bible, uh, Paul was talking about when he was taken up to the third heaven. That in the he said in the body or out of the body I know not. He just knew that he was taken up to the third heaven. So I had this. Uh, I went to heaven, and I had this trip to heaven. And uh, I remembered, so I have to kind of back up and preface it by saying, by the time I got home that evening from being in heaven, or heaven, um, I didn't remember the whole day, except for the going over the bridge to get to the college that I was visiting that day. Okay. And uh, how really, did you... I was really... Yeah, I uh, understand. Uh, like... It... These, I mean, I've heard I, these experiences. I, I mean, I've had them myself. They're indescribable at times, um, and you know, more real than real. You, you, you forgot the whole day of time. I well, how did you? First of all, how did you distinguish that you were not sleeping this morning? <laughs> how did how did we you, Mister? Yeah. Uh, she said she she forgot what she ate this morning. Understandable. I mean, time lapse. Okay, it's a thing. Did you have somebody that was sitting with you that also was recording the time that you were mentally not there? They and how did you recording the time? But they were they were they were supposedly with me. Supposedly, the, that's when pretty... we left. In the, when we, I remember the morning when they left with me. They were with. We were spending the whole day together. They left with me, and when I arrived home, they were still with me in the car. And in the car, okay. probably right around when I get into my house is when my memory starts. But so I, I, I slowly regained the time of being in heaven over the years. Okay, I understand. Um, have you ever taken any time to like listen to people's stories about doing certain substances? Like, <laughs> I have heard yeah, many a stories. <laughs> many a Many of stories that I've heard about people who have used different substances, which are a physical chemical thing that are known to alter right. the states of consciousness. Yeah. And the explanations sound yeah. very similar. There is a loss of time. There's an ineffability about the experience. Lots of people will explain it as more real than real. Um, ultimately, there's no uh, like any way to like veridically verify that these things didn't just happen inside of your mind. So it sounds like you had a very similar experience, which I'm sure was fantastic and very interesting for you but what about your experience would convince anyone outside of that someone who didn't experience it isn't that just enough for well, you the, to you know why does anybody else need to know yeah. if god is it? like you have an experience you know god exists I'm, I'm happy for you good for you like have a great day does that happen? I wouldn't even say I wouldn't even say I know God exists. I don't necessarily believe my trip to heaven was real. You know, I mean, that's awesome. I don't necessarily, you know, I mean, it, I'm just saying I had this experience. Remember a sunset without a, a sunrise without a sun. You know, I remember what I remember going across uh, where the, uh, going across a bridge, then then going across where the flowers like kind of followed the car as we were driving by. And then all of a sudden I was walking up a, 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 a stairway with a, a water made a stairway made out of water with an angel by my side. Sounds trippy. Did you, dude. Did you actually happened. meet God? Yeah. Yeah. Did you actually meet I went God? to one, of, I, I went to one of his, I went I, I met uh, well. I met one of his sense. I met his sensei, um, his karate instructor. Um, you'll meet him too one day. He's just the guy trimming the hedges. Somehow. All right, all right. Um, you know what would make uh, and, uh, Mr. Enigma? I think one thing that would make this like a more uh, more convincing tale that you're telling us here would be if like there was any kind of information that we were given during this fantastical adventure that you went on uh, that maybe would be some sort of tidbit of information that we don't actually know here already. Cause right now you're telling me about this like gorgeous experience you had over this like water, watery stair steps and like wonderful. I'm sure it was really, really like a great experience. And I, I have no doubt that people have these experiences all the time, whether it's under something or asleep, or I think that the mind is a very interesting and fascinating thing and we can do all sorts of things. It sounds like everything that you're describing is something that I can imagine myself. So 
unless there was like something about your experience, whether it's like information that you could have brought back that could have been like some sort of evidential thing that would give us new information about something like maybe the cure for cancer or like, you know, the codes to change something about our world that would reverse climate change. I don't know, something that would be fantastical that there it would be like no other explanation other than you were given it by some sort of higher deity. That would be really, really interesting for me. But right now, it just sounds like you're telling me this really cool dream that you, would you had. Like and there's no way for me to verify it. Would you like to hear? Would you like Absolutely, to hear I would. That might help you, bring about world peace? No, I would like you to give me information that is not just no? subjective. Is it because your stock portfolio support is it because your stock portfolio is surrounded by stuff that supports war? You don't want to hear no. something that might bring about world <laughs> peace. Hello. No. No, no, I, 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 I'm all about hearing people's different ideas for things. But unless you're going to give me something that's like actually objective information just, that will change something, it's not more, that interesting. I can give you more proof of God. No, I, your story is not that interesting. I'm going to just let Ryan talk here for a minute because I've been talking for Why? like 10 because minutes. Because it's not that interesting to me. Well. But I think these experiences are, are supposed to be personal. And I think that's really the problem with religion right now is that it's it's everybody's business like what you believe like has to be dictated by somebody else and i don't think that's how spirituality or religion was supposed to be it's supposed to be what suits you what fits you and if what fits you is going up some watery steps to meet like some dude who teaches some god sensei. <laughs> yeah like that's dope as af like that's so freaking cool yeah. like damn i wish i had that i it would be cool to experience but i don't and i and that's okay too mm -hmm. like that's that's absolutely fine to have your own personal uh, spiritual experiences without the need to prove to anybody else what works for you. Like, I'm, I don't, I'm not really sure what to say beyond that. Right. I, I, I've I'll... had some really cool experience. <laughs> I've had some really good orgasms. Like, if you want to talk about it, like maybe we could talk about that on Thursday. But I want to know but... how your orgasm is going to change the world <laughs> and why it's well, got to be everyone else's uh, business. <laughs> I think that purity culture, I think that purity culture has really hurt a lot of people. So if we could stop teaching all this really bad rhetoric around our bodies being these weapons of mass destructions, mm -hmm. I'm talking to you like ladies um right. then maybe the world would be a better place and we would have less okay so a, aggression a, a proposition sex could, sex could fix sex the world. Could, i was just gonna say that i was just gonna say here's a proposition uh stop teaching purity culture maybe we'll have some world peace right i don't see why that's any different than the story we're hearing now uh mr enigma i'll bring you back on for another moment here if you have any final things to say but otherwise i think we're just going to move on to the next call because i'm still not convinced based on your story right on next time right, have a good one bye okay well thank you for calling in and i appreciate you waiting on the line thank you. i'm yep i have a good night guys. i love Good night. You too. Thank you. Appreciate it. I do like hearing people's fantastic experiences. And like you had said, like hey. there's all sorts of I, these. Like, I have spiritual friends who who do like dabbling in, and they use yeah. Seesaw. And that like, I'm fat. Like, that's great. I'm I'm so glad that it works for you. It doesn't work for me and it shouldn't have to. And that, again, like, yeah. that's my issue with like Christianity. Like this has to work in this particular way. And if it doesn't, something's wrong with you. And that's not cool. Yeah, and just this like prescriptivism that we need to like now that yeah. I had this experience, whether it, like you know somebody climbing to the top of a mountain and then having this experience, and now I need everyone else to fall in line and to confirm my own experience for me.